Electric potential energy. Let's start with two positive charges initially at rest, with big Q at the origin and little q at infinity. Let the magnitude of Q, big Q, be much, much larger than the magnitude of little Q. So the field surrounding big Q is going to be much stronger than the field created by little Q, which will be disregarded for this calculation. The electric field of big Q creates an electric field force that acts to repel little Q, as they have the same charge. They're both positive. In order to move little Q towards big Q, a force needs to act on it as expressed by Coulomb's law. This force would have to be an external force pushing it this way towards big Q. And that force would have to be at least as large as the Coulomb's force between them. K, Q, big Q, little Q over R squared. If little Q is moved at a constant velocity, then the magnitude of that external force must equal the electric force due to the electric field of big Q, and it would be in the opposite direction. So we drew a free body diagram here. If this charge is moving to the left at a constant velocity, that means that the external force that's pushing it is going to be opposite and equal to the electric force acting upon it from the electric field due to big Q. So those would be opposite and equal. So there would be no acceleration. Therefore, the force due to the electric field would be equal to the force from the external force here. And that force would constantly be increasing as little q gets closer to big Q, since that force relies on the distance between them. And that distance is getting smaller and smaller, which means more and more force will be required. AP Physics 1 showed that the change in potential energy of an object is equal to the negative of the work done on it by a conservative force. When a conservative force exerts a force on an object, the work done by the force is the same, no matter what path it takes between the initial and final positions. A conservative force is generated by a conservative field. Gravity is a conservative field. A conservative field can have a potential energy calculated between the field and an object. The potential energy of an object in a conservative field is equal to the negative of the work done by the field on the object. So, for example, when a person lifts a basketball from here to there, this basketball gains potential energy due to the work done on it the external work done on it by this person against the gravitational field of Earth. So the gravitational field is doing negative work, but that same amount of work done by the person is going to be equal to the change in potential energy of the object. Work changes the energy of a system, and it's defined like this on the AP equation sheet. Change in energy equals work, and work is force over displacement, and only the component of force that's in the same dimension as the displacement will do work, which will in turn change the energy of the system. To calculate the work needed to bring little q from infinity until it is a distance r from big Q, calculus is needed because of the non-constant force. Remember, as little q gets closer, you need more force to keep pushing it closer and closer. This process is similar to how gravitational potential energy was developed uh, in AP1 with mass replaced by charge. As little q moves opposite the electric field of charge q, so remember charge q is creating an electric field that looks like this in all directions, so little q is moving opposed, opposed to this field, right? Positive work is being done by the external force, and negative work is being done by the electric field. Very similar to how when you raise a basketball up off the ground, the gravitational field due to Earth, so as it goes this way, the gravitational field of Earth is in the other direction, and therefore the potential energy is increasing. So let's look at this more closely on the next slide. 
If an external force needs to be applied to move a charge because it does not want to move in that particular direction, the work done on the charge by the external force is positive. So remember, little q and big Q are both positive, which means they repel each other. So in order to move little q to the left towards big Q, the external force is going to be pushing in the direction of displacement. When they're going in the same direction, that means that this force is positive. The work done by this force is positive. The work done by this force, the electric field force, is negative. Once again, the work done on the charge by the electric field is negative. Since the displacement is to the left and this force is to the right, since they're in opposite directions, the work done by this force is negative. When the electric field does negative work, the potential energy of the system increases. The closer these positive charges get pushed together, the more energy is stored in the electric field. So the change in potential energy for this charge here, or for this system of charges here, is going to be equal to the negative work done by the electric field which is equal to the positive amount of work done by the external force. The equation shows that for negative work performed by the electric field, the change in potential energy of the system, of the charge and the field, is positive, which means it is increasing. This is similar to when you have the earth and a basketball, and you lift the basketball up away from earth in the direction it does not want to go, the potential energy of the basketball has increased. Integral calculus is used to add up the incremental force times the distance between the charges at each point as q, little q, moves towards big Q. The electric potential energy at infinity is set at zero joules. This results in the electric potential energy of the two charge system being represented by this equation k, q, q over r. Little q is moved towards big Q at a constant velocity so that there's no change in kinetic energy. The sum of the forces due to the electric field and the external force must be zero. The equation above is not written on the AP Physics 2 equation sheet, so let's derive it using equations that are on the sheet. Okay, so here are two equations that are on the AP Physics 2 equation sheet. They both reference V for voltage, which we have not actually covered yet. But we're going to combine these two equations to come up with our equation for potential energy of a system of two charges. All right, so here, this is going to be the information for the big charge, the charge that's creating the electric field. So we're going to go ahead and replace this little q with big Q, just so we can keep that straight. And we're also going to replace 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught with K, just like we did with Coulomb's law. So now we have this equation for voltage, KQ over R. We're going to combine this with this other equation for potential energy, equals Q delta V. Now this little Q here is going to be the little Q. So remember, we have our big charge Q, we have our little charge Q, and we want to see what is the potential energy of the system of two charges. So this equation is going to reference information for this charge, and this equation will be the information for the little charge. So we're going to take KQ over R and plug it in here, where you see delta V, we're going to plug it in there. And that will give us potential energy equals KQ over R times this little q there. Electric potential energy requires a system. It is not a property of just one object. In this case, we have our big Q and we have our little q, a system of two charges. The electric potential energy, U sub E, is a measure of the interaction between the field due to this charge here, the big charge, and this little charge, little q. The benefit of using electric potential energy instead of the electric force is that energy is a scalar and calculations are much simpler. There is no direction, but the sign does matter. What is this electric potential energy? 
It tells you how much energy is stored by work being done on the system and is now available to return that energy in a different form, such as kinetic energy, just like gravitational potential energy. If two positive charges are placed near each other, they are a system and they have electric potential energy. Work had to be done to bring these charges close to each other. They don't want to be near each other, so you had to do work by an external force to get them near each other. Now they have electric potential energy, and it has to do with the magnitude of the charges and how far apart they are from each other. Once they're released, they will accelerate away from each other, turning potential energy into kinetic energy. These moving charges can now perform work on another system. Two positive charges or two negative charges have a positive potential energy. That means negative work is done by the big charge's electric field on little q. So as this small charge is moved closer to the big charge, the electric field here is pushing it the other way. So that's negative work being done. So when the field, the electric field, is doing negative work, that means the potential energy of the system is increasing and it is positive. So you can see here with the equation that if you have two positive charges or two negative charges, those signs here will cancel out giving us kqq over r. So once again, it takes positive work by an external force to move the charges towards each other. The potential energy of the system increases as the charges move towards each other. A positive charge and a negative charge have a negative potential energy. This means that positive work is done by the electric field on little q, as the charges are attracted to each other. So here you can see that if one of those charges is negative, you do end up with negative electric potential energy. It takes negative work by an external force to keep them from accelerating towards each other. They want to go towards each other, so the field here, the field is in this direction, but this is a negative charge. So this is actually moving the way it wants to move. Uh, and therefore, the external force has to be acting on it the other way to keep it from accelerating too quickly, right? If we want it to go at a constant velocity, let's say, it would have to be pushing, the external force has to push to the right. The potential energy of this system decreases as the charges move closer to each other. When the charges move in the direction they want to move, potential energy decreases. In an analogy to the gravitational field, this would be like slowly lowering a basketball down to the floor, decreasing its gravitational potential energy. Here is a graph of electric potential energy versus distance. The graph shows the electric potential energy of two charges as a function of r, the distance between them. The top curve, when the potential energy is positive, is when the charges are of the same sign. So either two positive charges or two negative charges. And the system has positive potential energy. The bottom curve is when the charges have opposite signs, a bound system, just like gravitational potential energy. Remember, the gravitational potential energy graph looked like the bottom graph here. And also a bound system is when the parts of the system naturally stay together, right? So if you have a positive charge and a negative charge, they want to be together. They are not going to accelerate apart. Determine whether the potential energy of a system of charges is increasing or decreasing by these two statements. If two charges are repelled by each other, that system has positive electric potential energy. If two charges are attracted to each other, that system has negative electric potential energy. The more an external force pushes a charge in a direction it does not want to go, the more electric potential energy it is gaining. So here we have two positive charges. They want to move apart. However, pushing them closer together in a direction they do not want to go increases the potential energy because the external work on the system is positive. Letting the charges move farther apart in the direction they want to go decreases the potential energy. 
Remember, we put want in quotes because they don't actually want anything, but it's a helpful way of, of solving questions involving charges. If a charge is allowed to move in the direction it wants to go, it's losing electric potential energy. So these two charges here, they want to move toward each other. Pushing them farther apart increases the potential energy because the external work on the system is negative. Letting them move closer together decreases the potential energy. So you could picture one of these charges being the earth and the other being a basketball. Right? They, the basketball wants to fall down towards earth. So if you lift it up away from earth, right, moving this little charge away from the big charge against the direction it wants to go, you are increasing the potential energy. Energy bar charts are used to represent different situations. Situation one, little positive Q is pushed by an external force towards big Q. So the before is that they're far apart, the after is that they're close together. So from an energy bar chart perspective, we start out with some potential energy, and then work is done on the system by this external force, which adds energy to the system in the form of more potential energy. Situation two. Here we have two positive charges close together, and then in this situation, little q is allowed to accelerate away from big Q. We're assuming that big Q is being held stationary. So as little q moves away from big Q, the potential energy decreases and the kinetic energy increases. So in the before, all of the energy is in the form of potential, and here in this after, we still have some potential energy but we mostly have kinetic energy. To get the total electric potential energy for multiple charges, you must first find the energy due to each pair of charges. Then, add these energies together. Since energy is a scalar, there's no direction involved. There is a positive or negative sign associated with each energy pair. For example, if there are three charges, the total potential energy is going to be the potential energy between charges 1 and 2, plus the potential energy between charges 2 and 3, plus the potential energy between charges 1 and 3. Let's compute the electric potential energy of this three-charge configuration. There are no values for the distances between the charges or for the charges, so we're looking for an algebraic solution. Quick notation review. R sub 1, 2 means the distance between charges Q1 and Q2. And we are assuming these are point charges, so we're not worried about the width of the charges themselves. Here's the equation we're going to use. The total potential energy is going to be the potential energy between 1 and 2, plus the potential energy between 2 and 3, plus the potential energy between 1 and 3. All right, so for each pair, we have K, Q1, Q2 over R, where Q1 is the magnitude of the first charge, Q2 is the magnitude of this charge, and R is the distance between those two charges. The second term of our equation is going to be the potential energy between 2 and 3, so that is Q2 times Q3 over the distance between them, R2, 3. And once again, we have K in there as well. Finally, we do the same thing for the third pair, Q1, Q3, and the distance between them. And look, we can even factor out a K. It's that easy. Always solve physics problems algebraically first. It shows you understand the concept and it makes the math easier. This general equation can be used to solve any configuration of three charges. You just need to substitute in the new values. And note, the k here was factored out so that you only have to multiply it by uh, one time. This saves calculations and reduces calculator errors. What if we kept all of the charges the same and the distances between each charge the same, but we flipped around where q2 was located? 
would the electric potential energy of the system change? So we've just swapped some positions, but all of the distances remain the same. No. Unlike electric force and field, electric potential energy is a scalar. As long as the charges and the distances between those specific charges are the same, the electric potential energy stays the same.